Welcome to the Room Now podcast. It is 11-24-2023, the day after Thanksgiving, and I'm Jack Cush, executive editor of RoomNow.com. The Room Now podcast is brought to you by Room Now Live 2024. We move the dates. It's going to be earlier in the year. It's January 27th, a Saturday, and a half-day Sunday, January 28th. It's going to be in beautiful Dallas, Texas, a stone's throw from the airport. This is the most interactive of all rheumatology meetings. Truly the most interactive. The style of education is truly different. Great rheumatologists like us go to a great meeting like this. And again, now's the time to register at roomnow.live and secure your hotel room and your registration. Again, we've got great sessions on RA, prevention of RA, nutrition in RA, cardiology in RA. We've got a session on JAK inhibitors uh, in spondyloarthritis, in derm indications and safety of JAKs. We've got a vasculitis section that's just fabulous. Uh, GPA management, treat to target vasculitis and large vessel vasculitis, a lot of great sessions. Make sure you're there. Today on the podcast, I want to review ACR 2023. We just got back from San Diego and ACR Convergence. It was a great meeting. And I think that um, I want to take stock of that meeting and see what I learned. And I want to offer you some advice and offer the organizers of the meeting some advice. So today we're going to be plotting future learning at ACR and other big rheumatology meetings for the future. The question is, how do you learn at big meetings like this? You know, again, the meetings got over 15,000 people, they say, two to 3,000 abstracts to review, over 200 sessions to attend. How do you do all that? And the fact is, you can't. And you can't unless you're prolific, really experienced. I got a lot of experience covering meetings, and I have a hard time covering meetings like this. Or if you have a plan, and most of us really don't have a plan, you know, if you're really thoughtful, you do the work ahead of time and look at the agenda and scratch out some things. But really, honestly, the vast majority of you, including me sometimes, um, when I didn't cover the meetings, you basically wander. You go saying, you know, I'm going to go to the poster session. I'm going to look for these two posters. I'm going to go to the great debate or some other session that you think is the the best session at the meeting. Maybe I go to a plenary session and then I have to find that poster that I'm really interested in. You know, the one on probiotics, abstract 0406 or something like that. And then what do you take home? Well, I don't know. You know, the idea is that there was just so much. It's hard to filter it all out into what was useful, what was impactful. Um, And I'm going to start you off for the next new year by saying there's a better way to learn and it's a digital way to learn and it's the way we've been doing it at Room Now with our faculty reporters for over 10 years. Um, The idea here is that you use the resources that are currently not in use by you and most people. These are there waiting for you, these digital resources for you to um, make use of, combine, amplify, and share. So this is about really having a digital curriculum for learning, and it can start at big meetings like this. And for me, the big words on digital curriculum is curation, cover, social media, um, education, and interaction. So what do I mean by that? It's what we do at Room Now is we curate the news and the research for you. But you should do that when you go to the big meetings, meaning, Study, plan, and choose what it is that needs to be covered. Then you should cover it. Well, you can't do it all. This is where it gets great because now it's the power of you plus your peers, your fellows that you work with, other people in your group or division. The idea is you work together in groups to cover a topic, a session, a person, and then you, there's an output. So you've got to do the work. You actually, I ask our faculty that they got to tweet 10 tweets a day, that they got to do one video a day. They got to write three or four articles for the whole meeting. So as a part of your commitment to this effort, you need to tweet what it is you cover. You need to write about it and you need to do a video about it because after you, now you'll really learn it. You know, see one, do one, teach one. 
Best way to learn something is to actually teach on it. But now you start combining these efforts and you develop a digital curriculum for your peers to also learn. So let's go back to the beginning. You organize, you get yourself into groups and the group is going to curate the meeting. So you're going to, I got a group of, I'm the leader of the group and I've got three fellows or four faculty members that are working with me. Everyone's going, and we're all going to do this one session or this one topic. And then we're going to come together at the very end and we're going to shoot a short video on everything that we learned. And then we're going to share that video with other people. So my team of four or five, you study, you plan what you're going to cover, you choose what you want to cover. <clears throat> it's okay to overlap, but in the end, when it comes to reporting it, one person is the reporter and I, you come together after you've done your tweeting and your writing and you do a video and there's five of us and we're going to therefore do five presentations, which means five, three minute presentations, one minute to presenting the data, presenting the abstract, presenting the session, and then two minutes for discussion. And then we move on. Boom, boom, boom. Now you got a 15 minute video, but now when you're done with that, in addition to the article you may have written and shared, and the tweets that you put out there into social media. Now you can share your session video and there are multiple teams. So we got a, a session covering RA and a session covering jack inhibitors, a session covering vasculitis, right? Or we're going to, those are just general topics, right? And you have to find the hot, hottest stuff in that area. Or you can make it easier and say, we're going to cover, team A is going to cover the plenary session first day. Team B is going to cover the plenary session the second day. Team C is going to cover the great deb de debate and team D is going to cover uh, late breaking abstracts. Or you can cover a person. Team A is going to cover Ian McGinnis' stuff. Team B is going to cover um, uh, Georg Schett's information. Team C is going to cover Peter Merkel. Team D is going to cover everything that Philip Meese puts out at the meeting. You see, you get together and you combine your efforts and then you share it. But in getting together and interacting on it, now you're the experts of not just the one thing that you covered, but of all the things in your group. Not all the things in your group, but with all the things from other groups. Because now you're going to get together and you're going to play videos either alone in the privacy of your home or at Rheumatology Grand Rounds on Thursday. We're going to play two 15-minute videos and discuss it amongst the fellows and faculty. This is the way you do this. So you work in teams and groups. You focus on a topic, session, or person. Everyone has their marching orders. Your objective is to cover X, late-breaking abstracts. I'm going to do the first one. You're going to do the second one, the third one, and we're going to come back, and we're going to tweet it. We can write about it. We're going to video it, right? The good news is you've got the tools. You're interested. You're a rheumatologist. you got a cell phone, which is all where all the work is done. And now all you have to do is put the power of plurality into play through small group learning and digital and face-to-face -face collaborations. It is what we've been doing with the Room Now faculty. My Room Now faculty, we have anywhere from sometimes 10 people to 18 people covering the meeting. And they'll tell you without a doubt that they learn way more now working with Room Now than they ever did going on their own. Because this structure is all about intensity and amplification and exposure to the best stuff and exposure to the best ideas and the interaction of your peers. Oh man, a thing that, that Rachel Tate said I hadn't even thought of. And then Catherine Dow said this about that. I mean, this is where it gets really, really rich. That's how you should be covering the ACR and ULAR and Room Now Live and the Rheumatology Winter Clinical Symposium, Maui, that's in February or the CCR meetings, you know, the East one and the West one. These are great ways to learn collaboratively with your peers. It's one thing to learn on your own. It's better when you do it with groups, small groups. Let's talk about ACR Convergence 2023. It was really a success because we were all back together. We were all back together in San Diego, which is a stellar uh, venue to have a meeting in November as pointed out by uh, one of my faculty. So I asked my faculty for input 
on what they thought of the meeting. Give me the good. Give me the improved. Give me the bad or the things that need improvement. And the ACR said that this meeting was attended by over 13,000 um, persons from over 100 uh, countries, including 400 attendees from developing countries. And that's a big success. But a few people pointed out there was no way there were 13,000 people in San Diego. It was a little light. You know, we're used to 17,000 plus people. That includes all the industry people and all the rheumatologists, and all the AR, ARHP and all the internationals or whatever. Um, my best guess and a guess of another was somewhere between eight and 10,000 were actually at the meeting in Dallas. And that tells you something in San Diego. That tells you that a lot of people are still attending this meeting virtually, which tells you one of the big problems we have at this meeting and ULAR is that ACR and ULAR and the big companies don't want to pay for or pay any attention to virtual. It's harder. It has an uncertain return. But folks, it's the cat's out of the bag. People are going to be doing virtual, and this is a glimpse of what is going to happen repeatedly in the future. A large number of people are going to be virtual, and you have to build something for them because they're coming anyway, anyway, and they're going to be very vocal about it. So, again, I think that um, we'd like to see um, things better for the virtual audience, but I'm going to get into that. Everyone said San Diego is a fabulous venue, great place to be in November. If you had a break at lunch, you go outside, it was sunny. You could walk for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, get something to buy, a bite to eat and go back to the convention center, largely because there was really no good food in the convention center. Everyone said that the pre-meeting courses, the review course, the basic science course, um, the Global Rheumatology Summit, they were all really well done, very thoughtful, very well attended, and liked by everyone. Home run. Without a doubt, a home run. Let's get into the list of the good things that we're seeing at this meeting. Networking was by far and away one of the things everyone loved. They said that the convention center and its anatomy, its layout, and the session designed by the ACR was really, really strong. So that you got what you needed, including catching up with friends, colleagues, and collaborators. Um, one of the strengths of the meeting was session design um, and the scheduling, meaning that if you're a lupus person, they didn't put this great lupus session in conflict with another great lupus session, which happens a lot at a lot of these big meetings. They were pretty good about being attentive to not um, offering too much that was conflicting. Uh, it had lots of variety. Um, it was a jam-packed three days. The last fourth day, a half day, was pretty underwhelming, both in attendance and in content, and we'll get to that. Uh, everyone liked the keynote speaker. Not everyone. Some, most people thought it was very good and timely, but hard to make it applicable since it was so much about AI and futuristic kind of things. But he tried to make it practical. Um, clearly, the home run of this meeting was... The simplest thing at the meeting, the poster hall. Um, posters were way better. They loved being on the floor. They loved running into people. They loved getting feedback if they were presenting their poster. Uh, so again, posters, everyone said they're back and they're, don't mess with them ever again. Some people thought post-pandemic posters are even more important and more demanded by people who wanted to cruise the aisles and meet the people and i must say i met a lot of people who i didn't know um just by engaging them on their poster uh, i met a lot of people just by helping them put up their poster since i was there when the poster session opened at nine o'clock in the morning i said that's crooked let's do it right move it down you know and it was you know it was kind of fun and i gave them the benefit of my experience and they appreciated that and now um i'm good friends with dr chandra uh in helping her put up her poster um, again, people love the feedback if they were presenting. That's one of the great things about posters. Better than an oral presentation. You can get feedback about your research, how to strengthen it, what to do, for, do with it before you publish it or try to publish it. Uh, the, po the poster hall was open from 9 to 11, and it was jammed. And it could probably go for three hours, um, but you had to move on if you were going to get to plenary sessions. Uh, um, there was no comments by any of my faculty, but I got to tell you, in years past, I would always run from the poster session up to the plenary session with the hope that I could get a seat. They had a gigantic room for this meeting. Uh, I want to say it seated over 4,000 people, and it was pretty empty. Even on the first day and second day, 
I don't know how many were there. It was so hard to tell. They had so many empty seats. I don't know if people were, ba- uh, you know, bagging on on the on the posters and going to the exhibit floor to get coffee. I, I was hard to tell where everyone was. The plenary sessions were great. They were not lacking in strength. But the people attending the plenary sessions, not so much. Um, poster tours were better organized um, and really felt to be high quality for those who attended. Um, what else can we say? Um, so those are the things that were really improved. It was posters, posters, posters. Um, and not much was said about um, the types of sessions uh, and whatnot. I, they were all, you know, the uh, late breaking posters was well attended. The uh, room, the room, uh, rheumatology um, uh, bowl, the, the academic session was really well attended. Um, the meet the panel experts, I think, was a new idea. Uh, they dropped meet the professor and they started these meet the panels, which were fairly well done. There was two that I saw on the program that were met with a, um, a good response from the audience. Things that need improvement. I could just stop right here and just say the the app sucked and the on-site um, um, program was almost as useless. The most dominant thing at this meeting was paper and pen, um, meaning if you wanted to map out your day, you could not rely on the app. Uh, and as I said, the 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 online um, applica- the online website wasn't much better. There are a lot of people who are relying. They were doing. They were there on site, and then they were wanting to go home and catch things that they missed. And there was nothing available for them. Some actually missed sessions, knowing that they could get it later on. They couldn't get it. Some said the app couldn't even open it. The app, when you were opening it and playing with it, and you wanted to return, would make you start all the way over, and would make it impossible to find your place. Again, the the critiques of the apps were kind of. Very negative, sometimes crude. Um, clearly, there was a problem with the vendor. The vendor was inexperienced, and the ACR knows the problem with the vendor and it, it intends to correct that for next year. But we need a better vendor. We need a better professional. We need someone who's going to beta test this. And I would say real users, not ACR employees, because the, what happened at this meeting was really unfortunate. So, yeah, if, and, and, and if you were trying to save something in the online application, hoping that it would come up in my app on my cell phone, that connection never happened. Or if it did happen, it didn't happen for the five people who mentioned that it didn't happen for them. Um, many struggled with on-demand replay. We, we know that the they ACR said they were going to live stream 35 sessions. Um, but there were hundreds more that weren't, and then many of those were going to be made available later on for on-demand replay. I haven't gone back to check. I have heard people that have gone back and said some became available after the meeting and with time, and that's a good thing. Um, a lot of people thought that with these higher registration costs, and oh yes, the higher cost of registration did not go unnoticed, and people expect a lot when you make them pay a lot, and that didn't show up in terms of um, convention maps, apps, uh, online services, uh, notifications, and food. A lot of complaints about food, but a few complaints about bringing back the rheumatology roundup that Artie Kavanaugh and I uh, stopped doing three years ago. Um, but we've been doing it on Room now, so if you want to see Rheumatology Roundup, you can catch that on the website or on my YouTube channel or on the podcast channel. But the ACR should bring it back because it's a big draw to keep people there for the last day of the meeting. As it was, there was almost nothing to look at the last day of the meeting other than late-breaking abstracts. And you put it at 7.30 in the morning, which made it hard for some of us to get there. Um, But that's about about when we would do – that's always when we would do rheumatology roundup at 7.30 in the morning. So anyway – um, uh, roundup sessions. Now, there was something that was supposed to be like roundup. It was called preview. Um, hard to tell what that was. What it was supposed to be was some really expert, um, high, uh, key opinion leaders talking about what was great at the meeting in a particular subject. For instance, Jill Bullion talked about the great strong abstracts in lupus. And then the preview part was she was supposed to think forward and present to you what this means going forward. I like the idea, except I think it was uneven and not really well thought out. And 
Certainly was no draw to keep people there for the final day of the meeting. Maybe with time, it becomes a draw. So again, there needs to be better sessions and more meat if you want to keep people there for the fourth day or the last half day of the meeting. Otherwise, bag it and make it a three-day meeting. I mean, honestly, almost nothing was presented on day four other than the late-breaking abstracts that could have been canceled, couldn't have been canceled. That's my opinion. The food was abysmal. There was none in the convention center. They're set up to do it. They weren't open. They had, you know, Mrs. Fields was selling her cookies as fast as she could. But other than that, there was non-existent food and you had to walk outside. And for many people who were committed to a schedule, that was impractical. For many who wanted to get outside in the sun, it was very nice. But food was really um, a mess. Lastly, I'll talk about the virtual audience. We had a number of our faculty uh, attend online. um, And they said, number one, they liked their online experience and they would want to repeat it again. But when asked what was wrong, oh my goodness, they had a lot to say about what was wrong. The main thing was very little was available live. It was only 35 sessions of I don't know, 180 or 200 something sessions um, that were available at the time that they were presented. Um, And they were very, very slow in getting the rest of them up for on-demand use. Um, The app was bad. The online uh, website was bad. Uh, And again, um, the strong thing was that abstracts uh, were available and could be viewed online, but they were available weeks before. The updated posters were variably, the virtual posters were variably available and often not uploaded and often no down, downloads. And most of our presenters said, um, usually the voiceovers, the audio file description of the PDF file weren't usually strong enough to merit their existence. Although they should be strong enough to merit their existence. Meaning you should have a quality recording presentation elevator pitch, three minutes on what you did in your poster, and the ACR needs to provide better instruction to the presenters on how to do this, give them multiple examples, and, you know, it's hard to get thousands of people to do something right, but if you do it repeatedly year to year, they'll eventually get it right. Um, uh, the Again, a lot of people were upset by the resetting of the applicant and losing your place and having to go back to the beginning. There were a number of of technical glitches and shutdowns early on in the meeting that seemed to resolve after day one. Uh, People who were in foreign countries didn't uh, like the fact that the website did not automatically adjust to their time zone, and that would also need to be changed. So um, delays in connectivity, I didn't find a problem. Some did. Um, and, uh, again, that was mainly in the first day. Uh, a lot of people thought that the problem with virtual posters and downloads and handouts was because the speakers for the posters were notified three weeks before on how to upload their content. Again, that should have been done months before. Um, and that three weeks was due to a time crunch problem on the ACR side, but that led to a lot of people just not doing it. Um, either because it was too complicated or because they didn't have enough time. I would think three weeks would be enough time, but it obviously this experience said it was not enough time. Um, nonetheless, the abstracts that were available in the abstract sessions or the available posters were useful. When the sessions were online and streaming, they were very useful and allowed the, uh, the virtual attendee to go at their own pace, to view it at whatever time that they wanted to view it. Um, as I said earlier, I, uh, my previous surveys have shown that uh, at least 40% of rheumatologists are definitely going to be doing virtual in the future, and they want that option. Uh, and anyone who thinks that everyone's going to go back to showing up like the way it used to be is sorely misguided. So for next year, I'd recommend that they fix the tech. Tech, 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 as someone said. Find a more seasoned, better a professional vendor for your um, website services for the meeting and for the app. Um, again, it's important that the ACR and ULAR uh, seriously address what is a new audience. They are virtual. They are adult. They expect downloads. 
They expect interactivity. Um, and yeah, you know, you can't do 200 live stream sessions. It's almost physically and economically un unfeasible. But you can do many, uh, if not more than half. And they can be made available within um, 24 to 48 hours after the session. Handouts. You, I'm always amazed at this as an organizer of many meetings as to how many of you just get so wigged out, um, crazy mad when handouts are not available to you. Uh, I often wonder, do you really look at the handouts? But you know what? The fact that you want them means you should get them. The reason that you don't get them is because it's hard to get handouts from the speakers. So I, as a meeting organizer, have to tell myself, am I trying to appease my crybaby presenters, the faculty who are the world's best, but don't want to do the extra work of giving me a handout? Or should I be paying attention to the audience who's paying the bills? These meetings are not about the speakers. They're about the audience and the learners. And if they want handouts, there should be no meeting in the future that doesn't provide handouts because, heck, everyone's got a PowerPoint. Click PDF and do the print. Hand it out. And you, now you have 100 or 2,000 new friends. Lastly, there was a recommendation for customized pricing for virtual attendees. Um, where you can tailor what's made available to them and when it's made available to them. And again, I think you have to think about your learners. Your learners are virtual. They are adult. They expect more audience participation. There were some who, who commented that asking a question in the audience seldom, if ever, got actually asked on stage by the moderator to the presenter. Now, I was in sessions where I did see audience questions you know, presented by the moderator. But the audience led me to believe that it was difficult or not very streamlined or that they were maybe viewed secondarily to those that were in the room asking questions. Um, it was a good meeting. There's room for improvement at ACR, at Room Now Live, at all of our meetings. The more we work at making these meetings your meetings, the more we're all going to learn, the more that we're all going to attend these great sessions. We'll see you at Room Now Live, January 27th, 28th. Register now at roomnow.live. Take care.